Nine years ago, we almost died here, but we're back in the Nevada desert. And not just any stretch of the Nevada desert. The most mysterious, the strangest, the most top secret part of perhaps any desert in the world. Just down this stretch of road behind me, we're about to link up with one of the most legendary highways on this planet or any other. Nevada 375, or as it's better known, the Extraterrestrial Highway. That is the road that stretches along the side of one of the most top secret military installations in the world, the legendary Area 51. We came out here nine years ago and nearly lost our lives, but we'll tell that story in just a little bit. But before we head down that road here at the start of the Extraterrestrial Highway, things are already getting interesting. Welcome to E.T. Fresh Jerky. You may have heard of Alien Fresh Jerky. That's between Las Vegas and LA on a major highway. Well, this is the real deal. When I was out here nearly a decade ago, this place did not have so many interesting features outside. <laughs> Area 51 is a top secret military base where they worked on things like the U-2 spy plane, the SR-71 Blackbird, but it didn't enter into worldwide folklore until the end of the 1980s when a man named Bob Lazar came forward claiming to have worked at the secret military installation where according to him anyways, the United States government has been hiding extraterrestrial craft. This created a whole sensation in popular culture and all throughout the 90s you had shows like The X-Files, you had all kinds of those weird UFO documentaries. Area 51 entered the public consciousness in a big way. Movies like Independence Day didn't hurt. You had the History Channel and the Discovery Channel nonstop talking about the aliens. In the popular imagination, Area 51 became mixed up with the whole Roswell incident. And indeed, that is where they said the craft from Roswell may have ended up. So today we've returned to the extraterrestrial highway to drive the whole thing, its entire nearly 100 mile length. We're gonna see what there is to be seen. We're gonna get as close to Area 51 as we can. And you might even get to find out how my friend George and I almost bit the dust on this highway nine years ago. Feel good to be back, George? You excited? I just want ice cream. All right, and it's Tyler's first time. Yeah. Let's do this. Let's go find the weirdness. Let's none of us be skeptical here or else we're not allowed to park. I'm really glad this place has apparently grown over the last decade, because I love the fact that before we even get onto the extraterrestrial highway proper, we're already encountering beings from another world. Oh my gosh, dude, this is epic. This place looked a lot smaller the last time I was on this highway. Looks like they've grown and grown. Look at this, George already found his ice cream. Good for you, buddy. It looks like we're already finding visitors from another galaxy. Look at this, alien mugs, alien pillows. Oh, they even have their own E.T. Fresh Jerky alien with a hoodie like Tyler. I'm gonna need one of those for you, George. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm assuming we are going to see plenty of this type of merchandise today. Look at this. We got some, uh, some tags, some lanyards, some ceramic mugs, some guide maps. Oh, and here's the E.T. Fresh Jerky. Look at that, Jerky from Area 51. Well, I can vouch for the fact that there are plenty of cows out there. Oh my gosh. We might need these. We might need to arm ourselves. <gasps> They're here. We've already found them. The extraterrestrials. Oh, there's a whole family of them in here. They must be big jerky fans. Oh, look at the little Ewok one. I love that they let people sign the door in here. Look at this, beam me up, baby. Got an extraterrestrial present. These guys found some gummy worms. They're happy. Oh, wait a minute, they're gummy yeah. fighter jets? Yeah, look, see. Sick. That's Will Smith's like ship right there. But I love my alien fresh jerky. Ooh, I recognize this guy. He's a Martian for sure. <gasps> oh boy. Got some sunnies. They're such a great selection of stuff. Now, as far as swag goes and touristy stuff, this part of the extraterrestrial highway, the part that's closest to Las Vegas, but still hours away from Las Vegas, by the way, is pretty touristy, pretty merch heavy. First, you have the E.T. Fresh Jerky here sitting at the foot at the start of the extraterrestrial highway. Then just a few miles down, there's another interesting stop. But as we travel farther out into the remote desert, you're gonna see fewer and fewer signs of human habitation. And that's when things start to get mysterious. All right. We don't have far to go on this first stretch. 
but let's do it. All right, we're just on the edge of the little town of Hico, Nevada, and this is where the extraterrestrial highway officially begins at that fork in the road where we already have to make our first stop because here's the first of those iconic signs. The extraterrestrial highway has officially begun. All right, Tyler, this is it. This is your first step into a larger world. All right. Don't worry though, gang, we're gonna stop again in just one more second. As you get farther down the highway, the stretches between stops get vast. But as you can see, our next stop was not very far away at all. This place was brand new, actually still partially under construction the last time I was here. But welcome to the Alien Research Center, otherwise known as Earth Station Area 51. And as you can see, it's a big deal. Would you look at the size of that extraterrestrial. This guy's at least 30 feet tall. I'm used to hearing about little green men and little green ladies, but gargantuan rusting metal versions. Well, that is exclusive to the extraterrestrial highway. All right, it's time to head in. Oh my gosh, what a transformation. This was totally unfinished last time, dude. This is this is awesome. There is like way more merch in here, way more walls, honestly. Look at that, a UFO shaped checkout counter. There are sick aliens everywhere. I remember correctly from a decade ago, this place is owned by the same people who own Alien Tequila. And look at this flying saucer they've got in here. Dude, this is sick. We got an alien balloon. We've got Marilyn Monroe in her true form. Somewhere on one of these walls is mine and George's signature. And there didn't used to be that many names on these walls, but of course in 2019, there was a big event down here. Storm Area 51, where somebody made a joking Facebook post, we're gonna Naruto run through the gate and expose what's going on there. And it was a big thing, tons of people came out here. So silly. I didn't end up going to the Storm Area 51, that's because George and I were out here. When it was still kind of considered a remote and crazy thing to do, the people at the base were very aggressive about pushing out any kind of visitors or looky-loos. But clearly since that event and all the press attention, it got, there have been way more visitors to the extraterrestrial highway than ever before. Dude, and look at this, I love that they have one of these signs indoors. This is like the only one of these you're gonna find that's not covered with stickers and graffiti. That's probably one of the coolest photo ops along the whole highway. They have a lot of clothing in here. Yeah, you can get your Area 51 boxer shorts. You can get some old timey space toys or comic books. Ooh, look at this. Need a knife? This place has got you covered. Dude, look at this. You got alien swords in here. You got inflatable aliens. Ooh, look at this on the way to the restrooms. You got little Anakin, and even more important, it's Mr. Worf. He's still here. Oh, Tyler, look at this. Finally, some alien tequila pajama pants for you, dude. Just what you've been missing. I've been, I've been looking for it. They're here, but they don't have my size. Or do they? Let's find out. Look at this place. is literally fun for the whole family. Everybody from the baby to the older kids. A sleeveless tank top for grandma. Some socks for grandpa. And then look at this. Area 51 jerky. So we've had Alien Fresh on this trip. We just had E.T. Fresh. And now, the real deal, dude. Area 51. Okay, these are cool, dude. Look at this. You got some totes. And you got the little purses over here. I look at this guy. That's a cool little wallet, dude. I think that goes well with your eyes. Got your alien uh, shot glasses, your sippers. Oh, dude, alien parking only. I need that at home for my dad. He's technically a resident alien from Canada. Ooh. You think about getting a coffee mug? Maybe. Now's the time, dude. Maybe. Oh, and here it is, dude, the alien tequila in big and little bottles. Oh, look at this. Magnets, bottle openers, Jar Jar Binks is up there. And I love all of the little plush aliens. I especially love the Bigfoot is here. You know he's mixed up with them somehow. Oh, what do you think you're trying to pull? You can't fool me. I see through your disguise. Ooh. I see Dr. McCoy hiding back there. Right, it's hard for me to pull myself away from all the touristy stuff with the the hum of that air conditioner in here is compelling me to leave. Plus, the open road is calling. It's time to head back out on the highway to discover the truth. Hey, what's up? First, I just gotta grab some hot sauce because I hear it's out of this world. There's no gain saying it. They've got some pretty neat stuff in there. So great stop, great shopping, maybe in there, but the great adventure. That is still to come. All right, now it's officially time to hit the road. I don't know why. I don't know if it's wise, but our next stop 
will be at what's called the front gate of the actual Area 51. Good thing we still have our parking pass. We're gonna give it another go. Oh, wait a second. I just noticed this right as we were trying to pull out. They added a new feature back here. For those of you who don't want to travel to the front gate of Area 51. Which, by the way, I don't actually recommend. It is an actual secret United States military base. You can come out here and get a photo op that looks pretty darn similar to the many entrances to the real Area 51. They've got crazy signs flanking all the dirt roads leading into the property that look very, very similar to this. The difference being that at the real entrances to Area 51, if you step anywhere close to the boundary, much less over it like Tyler just did, not only will you be pretty much instantly surrounded by what's called camo dues, the private security contractors out there, but at a minimum, just for crossing the line, you will be detained at gunpoint. They will call the sheriff in from Alamo here. He comes all the way out there and you're gonna get a minimum of a 600 to $700 ticket per person. It's all fun and games till that happens. And the last time that George and I were out here, well, we'll save that story for when we get to the real gate. All right, here we go. The rubber's hitting the road. And look at that, we just crossed the cow gate. This is it, fellas. We're back on the extraterrestrial highway. You gotta keep your eyes peeled out here because for one thing, they are testing jets out here. They do all kinds of training flights. You can see fighter jets doing maneuvers. And also, this is open range. There are cows everywhere. George and I came within an inch of losing our lives uh, when we encountered a lot of cows on the road in the middle of the night out here. As you can see, immediately after leaving the Alien Research Center, there is pretty much nothing and nobody out here. There's a few scattered cattle ranch houses. There's the three of us, a few other cars on the highway, and that is it. Now, before you get to the road that leads to what they call the front gate, of Area 51. You have to start heading down all the twists and turns and actually up and over some serious mountain passes. All right, we've come up the mountain a little ways. Just wanna show you how vast the distances are. And other than the wind right now, it is absolutely silent out here. It's the exact kind of place I love. Those little corners of America where you can just stand out in the middle of a highway for a long time and see nobody. And there's more people today than there normally would be because it's a weekend. I'm not gonna lie to you, as we get closer, I'm somewhat filled with dread. You see, since the Storm Area 51 thing, this has become a much more popular place to visit. The security's gotten a lot more used to people kind of milling around, looky-loos, taking pictures of the gate and stuff like that. But back when we were here, 10 years ago, it was still pretty unusual for people to be out here for long. We were filming at the gate, and as we left, a truck came out of Area 51 down the road we were on. And I slammed down the gas pedal like, we gotta get out of here in my Mustang. I'm flying down this road at 80 miles an hour down the gravel road. And this big truck, dude, the security from Area 51 was inches from my bumper. We hit the highway. They followed us on the highway, I don't know, 30 miles all the way back into the town of Alamo before they turned around. It was terrifying. When we woke up and nothing had happened to us. Yeah, that's I thought I they saying. were gonna come arrest yeah. us still. That's just like, all right, I think we're gonna be okay. Well, because we had read all these stories of like, people that got arrested out here and then just yeah. disappeared. Yeah. I think that's people who get farther in the base. I think that's people who like, they get in somehow, they trespass all the way in. All right, anyway, we are now going over Hancock Summit through a little bit of mountains. Once we're on the other side, George, it's too late to turn back. <laughs> We're going for it. All right, we've just taken the long and winding road out of the mountain. And once you get down, this giant valley opens up in front of you. And the very first dirt road to the left, that is Groom Lake Road. Notice how wide this is. This is much wider than a normal dirt road. That's so those gigantic military trucks can barrel down this path towards Area 51. Now, Area 51 and Groom Lake itself, where the base is, is all behind these mountain ranges we can see at the edge of the horizon there. I don't know how this unpaved entrance got the moniker of the front gate. Maybe it was just the first one people were aware of. The employees that work out there, for the most part, are flown out there on the Janet Airlines jets, the unmarked jets from the Las Vegas airport. But there have been reports of plain white buses with the windows blacked out, taking employees down these roads around the mountains 
to Groom Lake itself. Like I mentioned, since Storm Area 51, lots of people have come out here. Very few people have had any incidents. But we just had to stop and take this deep breath before the plunge <laughs> to get the trauma away. You'll read about it in my book. Seriously, there's a book coming. All right, let's saddle up. All right, this dirt road is long, and if you ever come out here, be prepared to drive for at least, I don't know, 20 minutes down this thing. And the whole way you're going down it, you're gonna be filled with dread. Or if not, you should be. I know Tyler's back there having a low-grade panic attack you, right now. You okay, buddy? It's low-grade, but it's there. I don't know what to say. I kinda feel like I'm gonna throw up. I don't know how many miles this road is, George, but all I can remember is that huge white pickup truck filling up the entire rear window. Yeah. And he's like inches from our bumper, man. Mm -hmm. That was nuts. All right, so far it's been about 15 minutes on this dirt road and it turns sharply to the right and all of a sudden the terrain changes. This is it, you guys, Area 51. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe it. Oh man, this is it, dude. This is on many weird people's bucket list. One of the most legendary, weird, eerie places I've ever been. Dude, look at that. There it is. That road will wind off to the left. It'll go into that Nevada test site back there. Look at this, no drone zone on the signs. Photography past this line is prohibited. Right now we're standing on BLM land, public land. So this is it, this is as close as you can get. Maintaining a healthy, respectful distance. Yes. We respect and love our country. We pay our taxes. I love, my, I love this country so much. George loves it yeah, even more than I do. Yeah. You can see they are not messing around. There's all kinds of sensors out here, parabolic microphones. And just beyond us, up on that hill to the right, you're gonna have a hard time seeing it. There is a white truck parked out there with security. They're known as the camo dudes on all those forums and stuff like that. They've got big white trucks that drive very fast. <laughs> So no hanky-panky, no shenanigans, you come, you enjoy the eeriness. It makes you nervous though, doesn't it? Yeah. It's just like, even I go through airport security and I get nervous, I have no reason to be nervous, but I just, ugh, yeah. I'm just one of those people. You I know, get, you're not doing anything wrong, so. I get that anxiety. Nothing to be, nothing to be nervous about. Yeah. All right, I'm braving a little closer. There's some people who walk right up to this. And by the way, actually, the first time we were here, I don't remember there being a gate across the road at all. I think that must have been added after the storm area 51 thing. I do remember the boundary. I remember the signs on either side. They're very famous. I remember that Wally thing back there, listening to us and obviously looking at us. Like I said, since that crazy thing, a lot of people have come out here. A lot of people step right up to the line. There's no way I'm even gonna step on this, this little patch of pavement here. But listen, it is so quiet. Look at those signs there. Warning, US Air Force installation. It is unlawful to enter this area without permission of the installation commander. Since we don't have his cell phone number, that is very unlikely we're gonna procure that permission. Pretty crazy, pretty cool. A lot of aviation history in there, a lot of aviation nerds get really excited about this place. Obviously all the tinfoil hat people and the alien people get excited. I'm mostly excited because my dad loved all those documentaries and X-Files and things. But I never thought I'd be back here to get a second chance at the weirdest photo op in America. Whew. We're doing our uh, doing our selfies, getting a couple pictures. It is weird. Once I'm standing out here, I'm thinking of Bob Lazar, Bob Lazar, liar, fraud, truth teller. Pretty darn bizarre. I can tell you, I feel like I'm being watched. I don't feel like actually. I know I'm being watched. Luckily, I'm not a threat. See that truck up there? Well, he can definitely see us. And I'm sure there are more people monitoring the cameras and everything else. I don't know what they're doing in there, but I'm glad they're keeping us safe. And in order to do that, we better give them some distance. Whoo! I'm feeling cold and I'm feeling like uh, we got our photo. <laughs> and I'm feeling like we should skedaddle. Skedaddle? Skedaddle. I'm feeling like it's time for lunch. You know, after last time, I was so nervous and coming down the road, and that road is a lot farther than I even remembered it being. What would it take, like 20 minutes, 25 minutes, something like that? Yeah. To come up that road. 25 minutes, 27 minutes. Which I didn't remember. I didn't remember like how long that second half of it was. And, uh, but now once you're here, you're like, okay, cool. Uh, it is what it is. You just don't want to bother the people who have to be monitoring you. Like, oh, I got to babysit these goons. Wait a minute. What's that? You guys hear a rustling? What's that noise? What in the world? Julio? What is that you've got? Did you take that? 
I think it's time to go. You're right, you're right. Let's get out of here. Quick, Leo, in the car. Go, go, go. Oh, thank God we had that parking pass. Oh my gosh, we gotta get out of here. Tyler, is he following us? No. Oh, thank God. George, you got Julio? Julio, what were you thinking? Well, next time, give us a heads up. I didn't even know you were out here. Oh my gosh, guys. We did it. We made it out. I'm not gonna feel completely comfortable until we are all the way back on the paved road, but I'm starting to feel a little bit better now. Woo! Oh. Woo! All right, we're about two thirds of the way back to the extraterrestrial highway now. Dude, Julio, what were you thinking? Dude, you could have got us all killed, Julio. Nope, no excuses. And what if they're still looking for you? Yeah, and what are we supposed to do with this? Oh gosh, maybe we can hide it in the cooler. What if they're looking for you, man? I don't want to get chased back to Alamo twice, Julio. On foot? All right, your funeral. All right, there he goes, on foot. What do you think, George, going back? It's cool. Bring back memories? Yeah, yeah, it does. Were you nervous at all? I wasn't nervous this time. I feel a little bit of rain. We better hurry up, Tyler. How was it? Uh, the, the actual gate was cool to see. Uh, the drive is completely dreadful. Yeah, full it's a long dread. road, right? That is the whole way you're like dread oh no. from the beginning all the way to the end. Plus, dude, there's aliens back there probably. They say. You know what I mean? I'm actually a lot more afraid of our government, uh, me accidentally crossing some weird boundary where they're trying to protect our secrets than I am of like cross turning the corner and seeing a UFO. Yeah, I'm more afraid of what they can do to us for sure. It almost yeah. feels like you're not supposed to be there. Getting probed is <laughs> <laughs> getting I was gonna say getting probed is uh, unpleasant sounding. But it can't be worse than uh, going to jail. Yeah, last time George and I stopped somewhere like this, but farther back, and we were joking around, and we saw this big dust cloud, dude. And that's when the truck came and chased us for at least 40 miles all the way back to the next town. Luckily, this time, there don't appear to be any white trucks chasing us, but uh, we still got to be careful of cows out here because that's how we almost died on the extraterrestrial highway. And we don't want to repeat that either. All right, there is another gate to Area 51 we're going to see. We're going to see the back gate, but between here and there, there are a couple more stops, the first of which is just back up off the extraterrestrial highway itself, which is a little ways down this dirt road. Then we just hook a left. Dude, that was already one crazy adventure. I cannot tell you how good it feels to be back on tarmac and like i just mentioned it is not far at all to our next destination it's just the next road down all right you might be thinking to yourself why are you stopping here there is literally nothing out here here's the extraterrestrial highway we just came down that just over those mountains behind the car that is where area 51 is and we just drove way back to those hills in the very far distance out to the front gate. But this, even though there's nothing here today, this is a significant UFO enthusiast site, a historic location. This was once the site of the infamous Black Mailbox. See, there was a rancher out here by the name of Steve, maybe we shouldn't say his last name, who had his mailbox out here. And for a while there was one painted black was the black mailbox. UFO enthusiasts and sky watchers and you know aviation fans would come meet at the black mailbox. People would camp out here. You see this big wide dirt area. Watch the skies, look for flying saucers. Infamously, Bob Lazar took his friends out here somewhere, probably not to the black mailbox, but to watch uh, secret test flights. Last time I was out here, which admittedly was nine years ago, almost 10 years ago, almost a decade, there was all kinds of trash and a busted out lawn chair that uh, I took a seat in. But they really clean this place up now because there is absolutely nothing. And I thought for a second, I was second guessing myself, like, are we even in the right spot? Until I saw this. There were more of these big rocks out here before and a big chunk of concrete, which this looks like it might be a piece of it, uh, where the mailbox post was coming out of. Now I'm starting to see a couple of uh, little rocks with graffiti on them. There was more of this stuff before. It's just one of the stops along the extraterrestrial highway that used to have much more significance, obviously, when there was a mailbox here. And people would stuff it full of letters for the aliens to the point where Steve put a new mailbox out here. There was a big one on top for him 
and a little one on the bottom with the slot in it that just said aliens. But it got stolen, and then the next one got stolen, and then the next one got stolen. Tyler was just telling me how some fan of the area put out his own black mailbox out here, and then that got stolen. Oh, I don't know the whole story. I just know somebody kind of put a mailbox out here for people to look at and take photos with, and that mailbox, I think, got taken. So even though this is Mailbox Road here, we can now confirm as of the winter slash spring of 2024, there is no mailbox, no mo. There is, however, this one stop sign covered with stickers and a lot of rain clouds and snow over there. Excited about that, Tyler? Yeah, let's get into it. Dude, it's weird, George. People have even stolen like the bigger chunks of concrete and most of the rocks that were out here. Yeah. <sighs> this is why we can't have nice things, people. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, guys, look. Some UFO watcher came out here and saw a little too much. He got abducted right out of his shoes. He was taken. Why? Why would you take him and not his shoes? I well, see the aliens are Adidas guys. Those are Nikes. Oh. Yeah, I heard not even Tiger Woods is wearing those anymore. Oh, snap. The little stinkers were here, dude. In 2023, Tyler. Hey, and look at this. Mike gave you some uh, candy hearts. So we're being out here and now it's nothing, George. Like, it's not really a landmark anymore. It's just Whoa. sort of a, a pad, you know? It was basically nothing last time, too. That's true, but at least we could see where the mailbox was. It's the, it's the area, you know? Yeah, the oh, area yeah. 51. Oh, yeah, hey, I didn't even hey. know. Hey, yeah, go. at least there was a chair last yeah. time. Remember that? I remember. At least I can have a seat. This is less fun than it looks. Here's a close up on that stop sign covered in stickers. I actually don't have any of my old cars that were full of stickers. I don't have any stickers with me. Not a lot of these are alien related. The last time we were here, like I said, it was a road much less traveled. So the people that would come out here were hardcore sky watchers, whether UFO or, you know, military stuff. People love to come out and watch like, you know, jets training and stuff like that. Or weird uh, 90s UFO documentary nostalgia enthusiasts like me or adventurers or whatever. I think the bulk of the stickers we were seeing out here then were Somewhat UFO related. All right, we're gonna head on this way into the storm. We've seen what popular lore called the front gate way over here, but don't forget the base stretches all the way behind all these mountains and behind them, about 20 miles farther down this road and over some mountains on the horizon over there is the little town of Rachel and the back gate to Area 51. And as cool and legendary as the front gate is over here, I don't know what this is, I just found this on the ground, the back gate, for my money, is the cooler looking spot. Tell you what, it's a beautiful country out here. Too bad we can't see it because of this rain, this weird freak rain, and there's no cell phone service out here. So I have no idea how long it's gonna last, but I hope it doesn't obscure our next destination, which is maybe the most legendary part of the extraterrestrial highway, other than, of course, the gates to Area 51 itself. We are heading in to the place, the spot, the money shot. And it's right here in the little town of Rachel, Nevada. Look at that dude, Comic Sans. That's out of this world. Now, last time we were out here, we stayed in Rachel, Nevada at the, uh, the only game in town, the place we're going to next. It is a very famous location that you are not, you weren't then, and you are not now allowed to film inside of. And we had some interesting uh, interactions with the uh, owner down there, so we're gonna see if we're uh, welcomed or if we're remembered. Welcome everyone to the Little Ailey Inn. As you can see, the town of Rachel, Nevada is not overly large. And so this, the former Rachel Bar and Grill is sort of the center of the community, the hub, if you will, and kind of the only stop for tourists in town. This tow truck hauling a flying saucer behind it is an iconic, world-famous symbol for everybody into UFOs, aliens, Whitley Strieber, Coast to Coast AM, and I am stoked to see that it is still sitting out here. And this sign, which has been world-famous since the 90s, is out here. I don't know what this thing is. This thing is new. 
and uh, we actually have cell phone service out here, which is definitely different than the last time I was here. The only lodging in town is you can stay inside of these trailers. If you want to go back to my old episode, you can see what they look like on the inside. It's not the Hilton, but it'll do. And even though filming and photography are not permitted on the inside, luckily there's still a lot to see outside, including this. Now you may wonder how the extraterrestrial highway got its name, uh, its official name with the signs and everything. That's because tied in with the premiere of Independence Day back in 1996, they officially renamed this highway. They had some of the stars from the movie Independence Day out here. Jeff Goldblum was out here, the governor of Nevada, and they buried a time capsule supposedly under this thing, which, uh, will be opened one day. Who knows what's in there? Look at this. You got a couple of extraterrestrials outside. There's that iconic sign. Inside there's a little bar in there. They will cook you up some food. There's lots of pictures of UFO sightings and things on the wall. This is really neat. I love that self-parking sign up there with the UFO. And this is pretty cool right here. This Project Oxcart, the SR-71 memorial right here. This is Amazing. I don't remember whether this was here or not. I don't think it was. Oh yeah, look at they added this in 2022. This is genuinely like one of the most iconic places if you're into UFOs or watching any of those old documentaries. Look at that. All species welcome. And there's that classic logo. I'm glad to see some of these murals are still here. They're a little sun faded, but they're still here. So weird that extraterrestrials are so much more advanced than us and yet they haven't figured out pants. You know? George and Tyler hopped inside. They don't want to stand out here in the rain, which by the way, this rain is such a bummer. It won't bother you though. If you're out here driving around, cruising around, it's perfectly fine. It's just a bummer for filming because you can't see all the mountains and stuff. But it's still a fun drive. We've been having a fun time in the car. Ooh, there's a little mosaic alien here on the ground. Last time George was here, he got a, uh, a burger inside. He was like, George, I can't wait to have that alien burger again. So he's in, <laughs> he's in there doing that right now. And I'm about to join them. By the way, over the mountains, over here, that's where Area 51 is. Uh, on Groom Lake, a dry lake bed. There's also Papoose Lake out there. The actual 49ers, the original Death Valley 49ers who got lost in the desert and named Death Valley, passed through that area. And there's all kinds of archeological sites out there, things you can't get to. And they also used to do a lot of mining out here, not just gold mines, but I think they used to do uranium out here, if I remember correctly. Oh no, no, I'm mixing that up. It was silver and lead. I was mixing that up with the lead mines. Look at this, I got a lot of tables and benches out here for when the weather's nice. Oh, nice barbecue grill right here. And this is my favorite thing. These uh, light bulbs on this flying saucer were shining into the trailer we stayed in all night last time, comforting us with their presence. There's a little bubble dome on top. It's hard to see with the, uh, with the rainy gray white sky, but this is cool. I would love to build something like that one day. And when they did storm Area 51 out here, most of the events were in uh, actually Las Vegas or Alamo, but they were supposed to do a music festival out here. I think it was canceled and then Little Alien wanted to keep going ahead. But as I mentioned, since I didn't make it out for that event out here, mostly because we had already lived it, you know, out here by ourselves when it was all scary, um, I don't even remember following up on what happened with all that, but the little alien is still here. It's still open, still has the same ownership as last time we were here, and I haven't seen George get the bum rush kicked out of the door. Which is a good sign. This is awesome. All right, we're gonna go inside, and uh, George is gonna eat. I'm gonna get some uh, merch. If they've changed their camera policy, you can come inside with me. If not, I'll see ya when we get out. All right, the inside of the little alien is just like I remembered it. They got signs up everywhere about no filming on the property. They don't want to be on YouTube. They don't want to be in YouTube videos. Um, we tried to arrange something with them beforehand, and we even asked about it, and they're like, we just don't deal with it anymore. So fair enough, but we got to take a couple pictures. Pretty cool, cool place to stop in. I definitely recommend it. Buy a few bumper stickers. We bought a couple coffee mugs. Now we've come a couple blocks away. If there are blocks in Rachel, it's a very small town to something nobody ever talks about, and that's the little gas station here. The Alien Cowpoke Gas Mini Mart and Gifts. And this is exactly the kind of place I'd be looking for anywhere in the country. Look at this. They got an old Plymouth parked out here, which uh, is the one thing that looks nicer in the rain right now. <laughs> looks like they got a sleepy family of aliens inside. That is a beautiful car, a lot better than the car. Uh, we're riding in, at least in terms of looks. Look at that, I tap on the window, but I don't want to disturb them. They need to 
They need a nap, apparently. Even the kids are asleep in the back. And part of the reason you cannot film in the little alien is because some of the main patrons are the dudes working security for the base. And if you were allowed to just film willy-nilly, obviously you might capture somebody in the background that doesn't want to be on film. Full disclosure, last time we were here, there's a few shots in my last video of the inside. And that's because last time we did ask one employee and it was like, yeah, it should be completely fine. We got a few shots. As long as you don't get people in the background, got a few shots. Um, and then the owner came in and was like, no, 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 no. And so we stopped and we left. But I want to say for the record, we wish them well. We wish them all success and definitely stop in, get a few things. Don't tell them we sent you, I guess, but uh, <laughs> get a few souvenirs and stuff like that. What is this, like a murder tractor? What in the world? Oh, that's cool. Look at this big tank. It says Area 51 right on it. And then over here, right in front of the store, check these out. A couple of little metal visitors from another world classic extraterrestrial highway wow look at this place this is awesome and she said pictures are very much allowed here look at this they got all the cool tote bags they got a microwave she's even telling us you don't have to buy gas here it's kind of expensive look at the alien restroom <laughs> she's like check out the bathroom it's a hoot whoa look at that okay you weren't kidding that is cool you're you are well stocked in here too look at this they got their own plushes here they got look at this look at the tumblers george oh they have they have lights in them george they, they, everybody needs a dishwasher oh yeah yeah that's okay i could hand wash for lights oh and look at all the aliens in here Check this out, they got several different species. This guy got himself a little plush. That's a great poster. Look at, they got their own hoodies in here. 22 bucks, that's a steal. Oh, look at that. I told you so. I'm getting one of those. Whoa, this is awesome. And look at this, there's a whole collection of antique radios in here, sick. That's great, there's so much stuff in here. Look at all this, look at the knit stuff. That is cute. Oh, there's a cow. That is funny. He's being beamed up. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. I find like the, a little chip thing. Oh. I love this. It's all DIY. I have to get this. I'm getting this mug right here, dude. That is so cool. Look at all the stickers, all the signs, the air freshener. Oh, you've even got the tinfoil hat. Wait, you wrote a you wrote a children's book? Well, I wrote a lot of them. Oh, no kidding. So you don't have the alien one here. It's sold out, but it's called Tendrix the Trapista, and you can get it online. That's awesome. Look at the glow in the dark earrings, George. And they're cowpoke earrings. Can't get these just anywhere. Oh, those are sick. Look at this alien. He's on the toilet. Seems like we could have used this earlier. Yeah, dude, if we just had that with us. Have you guys always been here? Oh, um, no, we, we're going on our third year. This explains it. They've only been here for three years. That's why we never noticed this place before. I love the little symbols on the door. This is so cool. This is very different. If you're coming out to Rachel, stop in here, man. Spend some money in here. Get some fun pics. Tyler was actually waiting in the car, and I was like, dude, you got to come in here. Not only is this lady the friendliest person ever, she wrote a children's book for crying out loud. But there's just so much cool stuff, dude. This is the photo op we were looking for, man. I was like, you got to come in here, dude. You got to have a good experience with Rachel. Silver bucket hat, dude. She even has a tinfoil hat at the counter. Look at that. Did you see the tinfoil hat? Just in case you need that, dude. <laughs> oh, you can even buy flavored crickets. I don't think I'll be doing that, though. All right, this has been fun. Make sure you stop at this place. It is relatively new, but it is up and coming. And trust me, go grab a bite at the little alien and come here. Get yourself uh, some souvenirs. At the Alien Cowpoke in Rachel, Nevada. Okay, as fun as this was, it's time for us to head to the back gate. All right. We're doing this. Back to the back gate. It's 20 minutes away. You kind of get on this little road and go behind the town. All right, in 20 minutes, we'll be there. Dude, George, is this bringing back memories, dude? A little bit. Cruising back here? A little bit. You excited? You nervous? No. You nervous, Tyler? I'm good. I'm going to be honest with you, George. This is crazy. I don't remember this being 10 miles of road, but uh, it has been nine years, so I guess it's just my memory that's faulty. Ooh. Oh, I thought it was aliens. It's just that cow thing again. See, and that's why you gotta watch out for cows. Look at you. You like to wreck cars, don't ya? Don't ya? I know what you're up to. 
dude, it's crazy to think that right behind these mountains is Groom Lake, is Area 51. And if it's 10 miles from Rachel just to the back gate, it's gotta be another 50 miles from the back gate to the base. So it's a ways back there, but still, the remoteness. That's how you know they're hiding something, George. All right, this is it. I see it. Oh, I completely forgot about how intimidating this is. Look, there's another car up there already. Oh my gosh, look at this. There was another looky-loo. Well, that makes me feel a little safer. They didn't go to jail. All right, we can pull over here to the side. Gotta be careful, man. Gotta be respectful. Tyler was telling us they put a new horn out here. That's how into uh, Area 51 and all this stuff some people are on those forums, dude. They'll tell you, they got a new horn, they got a new sensor, they got a new floodlight. All right, guys. This is it. As far as Area 51 goes, oh, there's another car behind us over there. They're more shy than we are. As far as Area 51 goes, this is as close as you can get because this road actually has a shorter distance between the town and the base. Ooh, this is very strange. It looks different than I remember it. Look at that, man. I got a healthy respect, like I was saying earlier, for my government and their property. <laughs> Although I guess technically, guys, it's our property. I mean, we pay taxes, at least I know I do. But yeah, look at that. You, uh, there's a little sign I can read it. It says show badge for entry. So you gotta have the proper ID. I don't think our parking pass is gonna cut it here. There's all kinds of sensors and cameras and lights. I'm sure there's some kind of horn and siren. I don't think I wanna hear that horn or siren. No. Not unless they blow it to be friendly. Siren. But how could you tell? Siren. You can't tell. Oh, no singing, copyright. Look at that dude, people getting fun pics. That's gonna be a fun one for grandma. You should make a calendar out of that one, Tyler. It does feel less scary and less sketchy because there is another car here and we just saw another one leave. And we heard the people, the little alien, like giving directions. Oh, you go to the back gate, you go down here. You guys gotta check out the back gate while you're in town. It was not like that 10 years ago. Remember George, we were like, we're gonna go to the back gate. And they were like, okay, yeah, uh, if you wanna, why do you wanna, do you wanna go, go back, back there? there. Yeah, don't do that. And, uh, you know they're in there, they're listening. You know they're right there. I wish they'd come out to you, just tell us some secrets. Just let me know. If there's no aliens, just come out and let me know. I don't Why can't think they just come tell out and you let me either know? way. I don't, I don't think that's, they Listen. can do that. Pretty quiet out here. <laughs> they didn't say there are any aliens. Jeez, so there man. could be. You drew that one out, didn't you? I was thinking. Oh, okay. Technically, they're not telling us there's not aliens. Oh my gosh, what is he doing? What's he doing, Tyler? What in the heck is George do? George! You think he's one of them? He might be, I don't know. It's a bold move, George. That's a bold move. I don't know. I don't know about getting any closer than that, George. I don't know. I think this is where I'm gonna stop, right here. There it is, guys. The back gate to all of the top secrets! Okay, that's enough. They got me, dude. A little too close. Look, they startled our friends, too. Woo, George, you got way too close. Man, wow. I did want to hear that. <laughs> and now I can say I heard it. You blew the whistle. As long as that's not followed up by anybody with uh, that is armament. That is cue to go. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Let's get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that that kind of scared good. me a little I'm bit. Good. Let's go. I'm good. I got to say that's my new highlight of uh, coming anywhere near Area 51. And I appreciate you, whoever is in that guard shack who blew that horn. Um, but also, that might be like, uh, you're a little too close, huh? Yeah. You think that's what that means? I don't know, I don't wanna find out. <laughs> Let's get out of here before we find out. <laughs> okay. Well, that's it for all the main attractions on the extraterrestrial highway in terms of nearing uh, the gates to Area 51, in terms of the little alien, the alien research center, the cowpoke store. Now that was cool, checking that out. And it's kind of cool, we saw some other people out here and made me a little less nervous. Then we got a little too comfortable and they had to blow the horn. Look, they're leaving. They're smarter than we are. Anyway, now instead of turning around uh, and heading back towards Alamo and Hiko and the uh, alien research center or anything, we are going to keep driving down the extraterrestrial highway until it dead ends the other way. But from what I've heard, there's nothing else to see. Just more scenery and more rain. Look at that. Normally you can see mountains over there. It's still raining. Man, this is huge. This is vast. Rachel's 10 miles away. You can't even see it. This place is huge. And I want to sit out here and enjoy it more, but Tyler and George look pretty eager to go. All right, guys, let's get in the car. Let's get in the car. Ooh, 
probably for the best we leave. I forgot, we've still got Julio's oh, cargo. Oh, let's get out of here, let's burn rubber. Goodbye Area 51, a place I never thought I'd come back to. A place I don't know if I'll ever return to. Unless the men in black show up. In our hotel tonight, George, our very epic hotel. Wait till you guys see where we're staying tonight. All right, well, it took about 10 miles to get back onto the highway proper. And now this is it. We got 102 miles to the next town that we're going to, the next, the next big town. It's gonna be a lot of mountain and desert uh, between there. We're gonna stop if we see anything interesting, but from everything I've ever seen or heard, Georgie, it is pretty much just this, the whole way yep. to the next generation. To the next generation? Sorry, Tyler, I got Star Trek on the brain, dude. I got yeah. extraterrestrial stuff going on. So. But luckily for you guys, through the magic of time-lapse photography, you will see the light speed, the warp seven version of getting out to our next destination. Look at that, man. The extraterrestrial highway. What do you think, George, of the highway in general? Fun road trip? Yeah, it's great. Good for the whole fam? Mm -hmm. Or uh, maybe not surly teenagers. If you have uh, a surly teenager that gets bored easily. Yeah, leave them at home. Leave them at home. The little kids might like it if they like playing on the iPad in the car, but yeah, it's probably an adult road trip. Honestly. Sounds about right. And then you can have some uh, alien tequila and you could uh, have a drink in Rachel, dude. They had some cocktails in there. Yeah, that's what you're into. And the little alien. Tyler, little why didn't you have alien. a cocktail? Oh, I don't drink. Oh, why not? Uh, <laughs> you really want me to tell you? Do you want to start? No. no okay. Just kidding. I don't drink. Okay, yeah, there is definitely very little to look at in this northern stretch of the extraterrestrial highway. But boy, is this drive absolutely gorgeous. Recommended. 10 out of 10. Hey, excuse me. Excuse me. How come nobody wants to give us directions? What the heck? That's the one thing out here. Some of the locals are friendly and some of them aren't. Here's the thing that's so interesting. We've actually been cruising down this road looking at multiple little clusters of rain or separate storms. I don't know what the technical term is. Separate branches of storms. And although it's hard to see because most of them were obscured by clouds, at least behind us. And I mean hard to see on camera. In real life, you can tell there's some majestic looking mountain peaks back there covered with snow. But weirdly, in this little patch of sunlight right here, I can hear birds chirping, the wind is blowing. It's actually like 45 degrees instead of 35 like it was most of the day. It's not raining on me at present. Feels pretty good. Strange to go to a place like Area 51 or the Extraterrestrial Highway when it was a little more edgy, you know, and then come back years later and it's tamed down a little. Cause you know, you'll never quite get that experience back again. But I am glad that I returned because otherwise I don't think I'd ever have driven this section of it and completed the mission, completed the Extraterrestrial Highway. And it only takes a little bit more driving, just a few more miles down the road, about 20 miles or so from the point we just stopped at until you're actually at the end of the line. Oh, dude, look, there's one, one house. We saw one house. Crazy. All right, that's it. Less than 10 miles left of the extraterrestrial highway. Oh, Ooh, but you can't let your guard down, dude. Cows everywhere. All right, it's just at the foot of those mountains. That's the end, George, the end of the extraterrestrial highway. It only took us nine years to come back and do it. Cool, but we completed the mission, dude. Almost there, I can actually see the little flashing sign. Holy cow, we did it. And look at this sign right here. Man, look at the whole fam is out here taking some pics, but look at this. Look at that. It is literally the end of the road. This is the town of Warm Springs. It's what's on the other side of the extraterrestrial highway. Dude, this is incredible. And what a moment to get those last minute fun pics in front of the extraterrestrial highway sign. This is a memory we will treasure forever, fellas. Okay, technically we're not quite at the end. I've got to keep walking here. There's not too much of Warm Springs, it's not that big of a town. Looks to be population us. Whew. I linger, but it's starting to get dark. There are cows on the road. So we are gonna blast our way the next several miles. Just one more hour of driving all the way to Tonopah, Nevada. All right, we've made it to our hotel. The adventure is over in one way but in another way for us, it's just beginning. However, this video was about the extraterrestrial highway and we've been there 
and done that. Please subscribe if you haven't already or make sure you're still subscribed. Check out the links below for our sick merch and our Patreon. This channel is 100% fan funded, no sponsors or anything like that. Plus there's some extra goodies on there and if you do that and you leave a thumbs up on this, you'll have done your duty. And now you can go home and... up here everybody's cooking some food having a little grub time to get some shut eye now it's weird you guys hear something hmm i don't hear anything what are you talking about i don't know just some kind of noise anyway i didn't hear anything but i've had this weird feeling ever since we left area 51 dude it's definitely an eerie place we'll all feel better with a good night's sleep all right, good morning dude all right good night now. see you guys uh, well watch your face there george <laughs> Gosh, come in, Julio. What are you doing? Oh. Come on, get in here, buddy. Oh, I'm glad it was you, Julio. You never know what could be lurking out there in the desert in Nevada. Wait, we didn't have any random land stickers, so, um,. So we didn't know what to do. We didn't. We couldn't leave our mark. But luckily, George. Yeah, my wallet. So. George had a DJ Johnny Lawless sticker. So shout out to DJ Johnny Lawless. He's gonna be part of this highway forever. Oh, DJ Johnny Lawless in the house. He was at the Tiki Marketplace where I sold out all my tiki carvings, dude. Cool dude. He's a cool dude. He shouted us out. He played that thing you do. All right. Here we go. These signs denote the boundary. No drone zone. Photography of this area prohibited. Just turn my car here and prepare to flee if I need to. This is definitely the end of the line. Not only do we have that security truck up there, he's looking down at us, we're looking up at him. But on either side of the road here are some pretty scary signs. edge here. You wouldn't want to mess with that. The signs say it is unlawful to enter this area without permission from the installation commander. I don't have a cell phone number. Oh man, this place is so crazy and so top secret. They've actually got Wally protecting it. Wow! You know, the irony of this is, I really don't care what they do at Area 51. I'm just stoked to be here because of the legendariness. Like, I've seen this in so many documentaries. This exact spot, look how close we are. Oh, we're in danger. Actually, the longer I'm here, the more bold I'm feeling. Uh, put the camera down really quick. I want to try something. Let's get I tried walking up to the guy with the truck and holding this up, and then the truck started to move, and I gotta be honest, I chickened out. <sighs> now we just have the long road back. Man, that's crazy. Looks like they take that whole top secret thing pretty seriously, huh? <laughs> Ooh, 